Today I'm reacting to the terrible Joe Burrow leg injury from NFL Week 11. Bro, what are you talking about, man? While dropping back on a passing play while on his own nine and a half yard line, the pocket began to collapse around him. He was able to get his pass off, but the defender from the boundary side of the field collided with Burrow as he released the ball toward the field sideline. The defender rolled onto his left leg while the foot was planted, causing Burrow's left leg to hyperextend at the level of the knee. However, as the pile fell to the ground, Burrow's knee collapsed inward, resulting in an additional valgus deformity of the knee. Burrow was not able to weight bear after his injury and he was carted off the field and taken to the locker room by the medical staff. Ian Rappaport reported that Burrow had suffered an ACL injury, an MRI had not yet been performed, and additional injury could not yet be ruled out. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the injury mechanism the likely injuries that we can expect to see, and how they managed to diagnose an ACL injury prior to an MRI study. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. If you are interested in sports injuries and how they happen, you have come to the right place. If you wanna know who I am and why you should subscribe and become a part of the intern army, then stick around to the end of the video. That being said, let's get right to the discussion on Joe Burrow. The injury mechanism. The instant replay demonstrated what appeared to be an unavoidable hit. It was the culmination of three events happening simultaneously. First, Joe Burrow stepped up to throw and was extended on his left leg, leaving it vulnerable. Second, left guard Michael Jordan pushed the rushing defender Jonathan Allen into Burrow's legs. Not intentionally, mind you, but nevertheless. Third, at the same time, Burrow was hit high by defensive end Montez Sweat. The two combined hits prevented Burrow from falling backward and focused all of the force on Burrow's extended left knee. Expected injury pattern. Joe suffered a combined hyperextension valgus injury to his left knee. This means that his knee was bent backwards and towards the inside at the same time. For the record, your knee is not designed to do either of those things. Each of them independently is a problem. Together, it is a whole lot worse. This injury mechanism will result in stress on the posterior and medial aspects of the knee, being that these are the directions towards which the knee is driven. The structures that may be impacted include the anterior cruciate ligament, the medial collateral ligament, and potentially, with enough hyperextension, the posterior cruciate ligament as well. In addition, the posterior medial capsule may also be involved. With only minor injuries to these ligaments, a small degree of laxity will occur. However, with more severe tears or ruptures of these ligaments, extensive laxity or looseness of the knee may occur. Ligamentous disruption may even result in dislocation of the knee, where the two bones of the knee are displaced relative to one another. At any rate, we can predict which ligaments will be injured by looking at the forces that are applied to the knee and deciding what structures typically resist those forces. The ACL resists posterior translation of the femur off the back of the tibia. This means that it stops the thigh bone from sliding off the back of the shin bone. So it is damaged with hyperextension of the knee. The MCL resists valgus opening of the knee. This means that it stops the knee from opening sideways towards the midline. So it is damaged when the knee collapses inward. The damaged ligaments will create a characteristic pattern of looseness or laxity in the knee. After the injury, Burrow was carted off the field by the medical staff. Shortly after he was examined in the locker room, news began to circulate that he had suffered an ACL tear. The medical staff were able to examine Burrow's knee and determine what structures were likely to be injured based on the pattern of laxity. Special tests would allow physicians to test the stability of the knee in a clinical setting so that they could deduce the suspected diagnosis before imaging was performed. Later, imaging would be used to corroborate or confirm the suspected diagnosis. There are several special tests that allow us to know what is going on in the knee purely by physical examination alone. Two tests that are positive in the presence of an ACL tear are the anterior drawer test and the Lachman test. Both tests assess for anterior translation of the tibia on the femur in various degrees of knee flexion, 90 and 30 degrees respectively. The English translation of what I just said is that these tests see if the shin bone can be pulled away from the thigh bone excessively when the knee is either bent a little or a lot. Normally, the ACL prevents this in all degrees of flexion or bending, so any looseness of the knee when compared to the other is abnormal and suggests ACL damage. A test that is positive in the presence of an MCL tear is the valgus stress test. This test assesses for medial opening of the knee when the knee is extended. In other words, this test determines whether the knee opens to the side when the leg is straight. 
Normally, the MCL prevents this, so any looseness here is also abnormal and suggests MCL damage. Additional special tests would include the dial test, the posterior drawer test, and the McMurray's tests, among others for rotatory instability, PCL laxity, and meniscal pathology, respectively. How injuries were deduced prior to imaging. These special tests would have been performed in the locker room and would have given the physicians presumptive knowledge of the structures likely injured. Positive tests would have implied injury to both the ACL and the MCL ligaments. MRI would then be used to corroborate the list of diagnoses suggested by physical examination. On November 23, 2020, an MRI confirmed injuries to both the ACL and MCL ligaments, as well as some additional structural damage. This could include any number of things, but given that it was not explicitly stated, I would imagine that it is relatively minor in comparison to the other injuries listed. It could include meniscal damage, subchondral fractures or crushed bone under the surface of the cartilage, or simply bruising within the subchondral bone. Burrow is expected to undergo reconstructive surgery if he hasn't done so already, and a lengthy rehabilitation after his diagnoses were confirmed. And he is hopeful that he will be able to return to the start of the upcoming season. Unfortunately, Burrow's injury is just as the latest in a string of injuries for quarterbacks this season. With four starters on injured reserve and three more out for week 11 with various injuries, 2020 has proven to be absolutely brutal for this position. Had it not been for this injury, Burrow was on pace to break Andrew Luck's single season rookie passing record of 4,374 yards with 264 completions of 404 attempts and 2,688 yards and 13 touchdowns over 10 games. But True to his nature, Burrow was not interested in going out without a fight. After confirmation of his injuries, he tweeted, Thanks for all the love. Can't get rid of me that easy. See you next year. If you have another athlete who has suffered an injury that you want me to cover, share this video on social media and DM me on my socials. I will pick my next topic from those DMs and tag you when it drops. If you are here because you recently subscribed to my channel, then thank you for becoming a part of the Intern Army. This is the channel where I explain orthopedic injuries and sports medicine in a way that's easy to understand for everybody. So hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my content. And be sure to tag a student who is interested in medical topics. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.